Sports director Joe Cook joins us live from Atlanta with the latest on the Rebs' big victory. That's right. Thanks, Scott. And it was an historic victory for the Ole Miss Rebels for the first time in program history. They have won 11 games in a season, and they do it in the Peach Bowl with a victory over Penn State. Head coach T.C. Taylor coming fresh off his first victory as a head coach. T.C., what's it like to make a debut like this tonight? Oh, man, it, it means the world to me. With Mike Leach, the Pirate, his memorial set up at Raymond James Stadium inside their Pirate ship. He was looking down on this game, and the Bulldogs, they responded. They come away with a huge 19-10 to comeback victory over Illinois. Tiger right here. This is Perez. Perez, you're going to be a Jackson State Tiger, right? Yes, sir. Why? Because my dad played for the Jackson State Tigers, and I think the, I can make them win another championship. All right, that sounds good. I don't know, it's going to be music to the ears of T.C. Taylor. Tuesday was a busy day for talking football in the state of Alabama as the Southeastern Conference entered day two of SEC Media Days, and the SWAC had their Media Day event as well. We're going to start with the SWAC, who started their Media Day event Tuesday morning. The fans got that chant started. And speaking of the fans, I caught up with one woman who still can't believe Mississippi State are the national champs. Oh, my gosh. It's, like, surreal. It's come through. It's been amazing. All right, and that's basically the reaction of a lot of Rebel fans with that great run that the Rebels had going 10-1 and in the postseason, and now they can call themselves national champions. So it was a great run, and it's not finished again. This celebration started all the way back on Sunday night when they were dogpiling at Charles Schwab Field in Omaha, and now they'll have their own little dogpile, if you will, here at Swayze Field. They return home. Again, it's been 40 days since they've been here at their home field. It's Little girls wearing waving pom-poms. You got all the fans up there in the stands. They're just ready to go to welcome in their national champions. And, of course, you got to think about head coach Mike Bianco. He's been a head coach here for over 20 years and got to Omaha for just the second time, and now he's bringing back a national championship. And, of course, he was named Coach of the Year by Collegiate Baseball yesterday. He got another Coach of the Year honor today as well. So the honors are coming in, and rightly so. And there's going to be a lot more special guests. We're going to hear from some players. Definitely Tim Elko, the captain, the senior who came back after suffering those ACL injuries. He came back for one more year. All his patience and perseverance has paid off. The Rebels came into today needing one win to capture the national championship, and they did just that. Here's the reaction from Oxford. What's the pitch? As you can see, Rebel fans just beside themselves as they are celebrating the first ever national championship in the baseball program's history. The first for head coach Mike Bianco as a head coach of the Rebels after more than 20 years leading the program. One fan was very happy for the head coach. This is a team I stayed up 14 hours to get seating out in right field. Never lost any doubt in this team. Never lost any doubt in Mike and the boys. Let's go. You know, Ole Miss, this baseball pro program's been building over the years. Mike Bianco finally did it. You know, hotty toddy, let's go. This is the best day of our lives. Hotty toddy, go Rebs. Let's get better than this. Come to the sip. Let's have a great time, man. Hotty toddy. The celebration will continue well into tonight here in Oxford and most definitely when the team comes back and later this week as they'll be having their first ever national championship parade. Reporting in Oxford, Joe Cook, 16 WAPT Sports. 16 WAPT Zone, Joe Cook kicks off our team coverage with more from JSU's campus. From one Hall of Famer cemented in Jackson State's football legacy to another Hall of Famer becoming the head coach of the football program, Deion Sanders. Prime time is at JSU. <laughs> what a scene it was at the Lee E. Williams Athletic Center. Prime time coming with a police escort as he takes over the Jackson State football program and becomes a college head coach for the very first time. The JSU faithful were more than excited about history being made at their school. I think this is a day of history. This is what we need. 
You want to know how to protest? Send your students, your black students, to the HBCU. That's the biggest protest I've ever seen in my life. Not a lot of people thought this day would happen, but Dion emphasized his theme, I believe. I believe the men that I sat and looked into the eyes on a Zoom call yesterday can win SWAT championships. I believe the sonic boom is the best thing since peanut butter and jelly. I believe that our commitment to excellence academically can continue. I believe that our student enrollment can increase. I believe that the crime in this community could cease. I believe that these young men that we're raising is going to be pillars in the community, not only professional football players, but professionals. It's a great time to be a Tiger. It's full of excitement, uh, expectations. It's really, really a great atmosphere, and uh, we're hoping that things turn around for JSU, and we're looking for that glory days to come back. It means a lot to be here today, being a Jacksonian, and uh, I think this is going to help Jackson State uh, get back up to where they need to be. Uh, there's, a, there's a big deal here, and we need a good person in charge that this university can come back and be strong like it used to be. Now that Deion Sanders has been officially introduced as the new head coach of the football team, now he will put his staff together and, of course, look ahead to building a roster to bring wins to the program. Reporting in the Hall of Fame room at Jackson State University, Joe Cook, 16 WAPT Sports. JSU's last regular season home game was against rival Southern. The Jaguars coming in with a four game winning streak and of course JSU undefeated on the year. But in the end, the Tigers continue to be dominant as they roll to a 35 nothing win over the Jags. Veterans Memorial Stadium just about filled to capacity as JSU fans and Southern fans blanketed the vet. Jackson State kicked off the day with ESPN's college game day this morning. Reese Davis, Desmond Howard and JSU legend Jimmy Smith watching this one. The JSU defense set the tone in the first quarter. Southern was looking to take the early lead with a field goal, but it was blocked by Jeremiah Brown. That was a huge momentum builder for JSU. The Jacks were wide left on another field goal as the first quarter went scoreless. But in the second quarter, JSU shook off a slow start and they danced in the rain for 22 points in the second quarter. Shadur Sanders accounted for all three touchdowns. He had Savion Wilkinson on a three yard pass for a score. Then he scored two rushing touchdowns of his own. John Reagan led the fiery JSU defense, three tackles for loss and a sack and five tackles. The defense accomplished the ultimate goal. They got their first shutout of the season and their head coach was very proud. Total dominant. I mean, that's the only reason I could go for it on fourth down early in the game because I know, I know what they got. You didn't have to watch the game, but when you look at the score, it is what it is. This ain't no, um, I know we getting close to Halloween, but we ain't tricking or we ain't treating. This real. Jackson State wins 35-0 over Southern, the 10th straight win at home for JSU. All right, now the Tigers will take their show on the road. Next week, they have Texas Southern in Houston, and that starts three straight road games to close out the 2022 regular season. Reporting for Veterans Memorial Stadium, Joe Cook, 16, WAPT Sports. The latest win for the Rebels might be their most complete win as they down LSU 31-17 on Eli Manning Day. Defense was the catalyst for this W. LSU was up 7-0, looking for more, but Tasheem Johnson gets a red zone interception. The Rebels held the Tigers, and Ed Orgeron's return to just 17 points, matching a season low. Offensively, the run game was the recipe for winning. 266 rushing yards, 14 first downs on runs, and three touchdowns. After this game, the Rebels believe they are making the transition from a good team to a great one. No. It's, it's easy to be a good team, right? It, it, it's easy, but it's hard to become that great team because you need all three phases to do their job. It doesn't matter who's out there, like, we're going to find a way to win, and that's, that's, the, that's the bottom line. It, it, it's, all, it's, all, it's all a mental game. You know, like, we, got, we got the coaches, we got the scheme. You know, it's just relying back on our training and trusting what we're getting and going out there and execute. Hey, man, we're pretty good. So we tell them all week, hey, you know, good is the enemy of great, and that's where we are. Like, we're good, but then we don't close people out at the end of the games. We're not great. And, um, you know, we weren't great today either, and told them that. So 
The good thing is we're close. If we can get healthy and play the way we know how to play, we could be a really special team. I just hope we get healthy before there are any games left. Ole Miss improves to 6-1, and one, and next week they visit Auburn. Reporting in Vaught-Hemingway Stadium, Joe Cook, 16, WAPT Sports. I'm here on the field live with head coach T.C. Taylor coming fresh off his first victory as a head coach. T.C., what's it like to make a debut like this tonight? Oh, man, it, it means the world to me. I mean, it just lets you know the, the type of work this football has uh, put in this year. You know, and then all the people behind the scenes. You know, our, our president, Dr. Anthony has done a great job. You know, we've been practicing under the lights the last couple of years. She's done a great job of providing us our lights and getting our facilities where, where they need to be, as well as our AD, AD Robinson. And it's just been a, a t total team effort. Everything that I've asked for, she's been there. AD Robinson been there for everything this football team needed. And they provided, and we came out here and put it all together tonight. And a big 30-point win, offense and defense was on point. Where do you go from here? Now you got one win under your belt now. We keep going. You know, we keep going as a football team. We, this is just the beginning. We got a long way go, to go. These next two weeks are really good football teams. You know, going, we got to start getting prepared for a FAMU team. We already know, already know what that game in the East is about, you know, for us against FAMU. And then we got to go down to Southern. But it's, it's just the road just getting started. So we got to, uh, you know, keep working and do what, uh, you know, allowed us to get this win tonight. Congratulations, Coach. Enjoy the win. First of many. All right, that was C.C. Taylor coming off a fresh 37-7 win over South Carolina State in the MEAC SWAC Challenge. We'll have a lot more on this big win to start off the T.C. Taylor era at Jackson State. I'll have a lot more coming up later in sports. Bradley, I'll send it back to you. So what a day it was for football in Alabama, but it doesn't stop. We're going to have more coverage of SEC Media Days when Mississippi State will hold court here in Hoover. That's all the time I have for sports reporting in Hoover, Alabama. Joe Cook, 16, WAPT Sports.